H. pylori is a stomach bug that has unknowingly wreaked havoc on so many people. Helicobacter pylori used to be referred to as Campylobacter until they recategorized it. A Nobel Prize was actually awarded for its discovery in 2005. H. pylori believed to be the primary cause of ulcers, and it's difficult to test for as it establishes itself mostly in the upper part of the digestive tract, the stomach, so it's not usually present in a lot of stool samples, and most modern doctors do not utilize breath tests, and even something like a blood test is not that accurate. If you want to know the cure for H. pylori, I will cover that near the end of this video, and it's actually quite simple. When you do research and look at studies, you find that most persons infected with H. pylori do not suffer any symptoms. It's similar to candida in a sense that it's supposed to be in our stomach. Now, when you look at symptoms of H. pylori overgrowth, key word here, overgrowth. You know, just the bacteria being present is not an issue. Certain strains and volumes of it are what's causing the problem. And these might sound like SIBO, SIFO, small intestinal bacterial or fungal overgrowth. And I do believe that H. pylori is present in those two issues as well. You know, they tend to manifest together. Burning pain in stomach, that gets worse when your stomach is empty, nausea, loss of appetite, frequent burping, bloating, and unintentional weight loss. And I think that really, really frequent burping and low gut motility after meals, the food sitting in your stomach for a while, are two of the major telltale signs that H. pylori is playing a role in your digestive issues. And doctors will typically treat this with antibiotics or proton pump inhibitors. Antibiotics typically only being a temporary fix, and doctors don't really know which ones and combinations can actually eradicate it. And the proton pump inhibitors, which just reduce your stomach acid, make things worse because that's actually what H. pylori does in your stomach. It reduces stomach acid to survive. So as we said earlier, what allows any type of negative bacteria to proliferate in your stomach isn't the presence of it, it's the lack of good bacteria to keep it in check, particularly lactobacillus. Regardless of how many antibiotics, antimicrobials like oregano oil, H. pylori cures that you take, I think broccoli sprouts, olive oil are popular ones, it will come back if you do not incorporate the right probiotic bacteria. And I've covered protocols, how to fix this in my gut microbiome videos. However, H. pylori is very resilient. It penetrates the stomach lining, uses the mucus in the stomach to protect itself. Your body's immune cells cannot reach the H. pylori. And even if you take an antimicrobial, you know, the bacteria is so strong, it's neutralizing the stomach acid, it's detoxing the antimicrobials. It's so, so difficult to get rid of. You would basically be burning and corroding your stomach lining just to kill the H. pylori, and it's not sustainable to damage your body on that level for such a long period of time. You need something specific that can really counter this. So when you have the right antimicrobials and the right probiotics, you can gently whisk the H. pylori away, although it is a an octopus freaky little creature. So over the past few years, I've come across quite a few interesting studies on H. pylori, one of which states that candida protects H. pylori. They found active H. pylori bacterium within candida yeast, suggesting the habitat of the yeast offers you know, H. pylori nutrients and allows it to survive in unfavorable conditions. So I don't think people are dealing with H. pylori on its own, H. pylori likely becomes eradicated pretty quickly in the stomach with a protocol, but when candida is present in overgrowth amounts in the intestines, H. pylori will seek refuge only to return mere days later in your stomach once the antimicrobials are stopped. Now, if you take the proper antimicrobials, clear out the H. pylori, clear out the candida, then make sure to take probiotics to prevent it from coming back, you should theoretically be good to go, but I really want to emphasize the strength and resilience of H. pylori compared to candida. You know, candida is very easy to get rid of, and 
it's hard to illustrate unless you experience an H. pylori infection yourself. Now back when I was struggling towards the end of the carnivore diet and I had severe liver issues, my digestion was really compromised, my H. pylori was horrible, horrible, horrible. And if I don't stick to my antimicrobials and enzymes, it still comes back because my liver isn't fully healed. I mean, I went to the doctor, I got stool samples that were negative, I even had a, a biopsy taken and that was negative too, but the frequency of the burping and my bloating in the stomach immediately after meals, it could not have been anything but H. pylori. And there were two weeks where I literally did not sleep a wink back in 2019. Some of you guys that have been following my channel, watch my live streams, might have remembered that. And that was after I consumed sheep's milk, which is coincidentally the number one breeding ground for H. pylori. Unlike human stomachs, which have certain bacteria, sheep have very large amounts of H. pylori that seem to help them digest their food, you know, the animals unaffected by H. pylori's presence in very, very large amounts. But that H. pylori transmits through the milk and when consumed by a human, as opposed to a sheep, can cause issues. It kind of creates opportunity where large amounts of H. pylori in the sheep milk, and I was drinking like, half a gallon, a gallon of sheep milk a day, which was probably an insanely unrealistic amount of H. pylori bacteria entering my stomach. So there was one study explaining that, you know, that H. pylori exists in the sheep's stomach, and there was another one, which was H. pylori infection in Sardinian shepherds was basically 100%, it was like 98%. Sardinia, Italy, being famous for their sheep cheeses, you know, compared to the lower rates in their family members and friends, which were still very high, over 75%, it seems like the H. pylori was from direct interaction between the shepherds and the sheep, uh, which gave them the bacterium. Now, Sardinians are known for being some of the longest lived people in the world, and, you know, their daily lives, just like the sheep, are seemingly unaffected by its presence. You know, so a person living a natural lifestyle, active, nutritious diet, low Wi-Fi, will have a healthy gut microbiome, therefore not have issues with H. pylori. Very simple yet unique cure. The only thing that worked for me out of all the stuff I've tried, and believe me, I've tried just about every supplement antimicrobial you can buy, is known as Chios, uh, well I think it's pronounced Chios Mastija, also known as Mastic Gum, which is harvested in Greece, only exists in Greece, and it's tightly controlled by certain organizations that really protect their growers and the price of the product. Uh, so if you have H. pylori and need to take large amounts of it on a consistent basis, it, it is a little expensive. And I mean, compared to a doctor's visit and all the other money you would spend on supplements and antibiotics trying to fix this, it's definitely a trade-off. And what's so unique about mastic gum as an antimicrobial is that it doesn't get digested and absorbed by the body. You know, when you take it crushed up or in a powder form, it'll actually kind of form into a tiny ball as it churns in your stomach and intestines and be excreted in the bowel movement. You'll actually be able to see it. Uh, so it's like a tiny H. pylori antimicrobial missile traveling through your intestines, whereas things like oregano oil, most antimicrobials cause massive liver and digestive stress right when they enter that small intestine. Mastic gum doesn't do that. And there's actually a study where they compared four groups that had H. pylori. One group was given mastic gum and the other three were given mastic gum and different amounts of antibiotics. It was shown to cure H. pylori on its own and then when combined with certain antibiotics, not all became more effective. So, you know, some antibiotic groups didn't actually help H. pylori, some antibiotics were effective, but adding mastic gum or mastic gum on its own is effective. Now, I've been using mastic gum for a while now and am incredibly comfortable with its effectiveness when combined with digestive enzymes and water kefir. I know you guys have been waiting a while for me to show you what I take in my enzyme and antimicrobial protocol, and I think I will be doing that tomorrow on Thursday, so keep an eye out for that video. Uh, I did reach out to the Growers Association and I did get some mastic so I can offer it to you guys at a competitive price. In addition, I will have a limited amount of my digestive enzyme mix available 
both on organsupplements.com. And one last thing to touch on, uh, some of you guys probably remember when I had like the blown up jaw muscles and I showed you guys like chewing the jaw gum. I was chewing this a lot, the Kios Mastic Gum. So you can crush it up, take it as an antimicrobial, or if you take, uh, they're referred as tears. It's like little chunks of mastic. If you let them sit in your mouth and get warm and moistened by the saliva, they become pliable and you can chew it like gum. Uh, so really, really interesting stuff. Uh, when you take it directly as an antimicrobial, it goes down there, it, it really kind of eradicates everything. If you chew it for a long period of time, that like mastic saliva drips down your throat into your stomach and it's also pretty effective. Uh, so definitely try that stuff out. Let me know how you guys like it. I would really um, enjoy some feedback on this. So if you guys could please leave a comment down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that bell icon so they don't notify you of my videos. You know, as with every video I do, hopefully this helps you guys improve your health in some way. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.